Welcome to Salt Lake City. I'm Steve. And I'm Derek. And today we're going to talk about the 10 things we wish we knew before we got a Glowforge. As always, like and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do. We put out these videos every week. Tip number one, make sure that the laser that you're getting is the size that you need. Industrial lasers aren't cheap. No, that's um, a big investment. Yeah, um, like a laser like this one, you know, this is maybe 15 bucks on Amazon, uh, but that's a five milliwatt laser. Right. So the Glowforge uses a 45 watt laser, which is literally thousands of times more powerful than this one. So it's important for you to do your research so you get what you actually need. Um, the Glowforge is available in multiple different powers, but there are a lot of other laser cutters that are kind of similar on the market that range hugely in their power spectrum. So just really like know the scope of your projects and don't overspend or underspend. Like, if all you're doing is lightly etching into leather, you don't need a laser that can cut quarter inch stainless steel. Right. I would like one though. That'd be awesome. Tip number two, these things are noisy. Now, I know that the videos promoting these make these machines seem quiet. You do them in the comfort of your home, in your living room, in the middle of the office, etc. But these things are loud, and most of the sound is actually from the internal fan being used to pull the smoke uh, out of the machine. Think like, not quite as loud as a leaf blower, but, but pretty close. And inside. Yeah. So there are a couple things that you can do uh, to make sure uh, you mitigate that problem. One of the things that we've done is get uh, an inline fan. We found this one, uh, we'll link below, uh, right on Amazon. Um, it comes, it's, it, it's really powerful. It's a six inch fan, so you need to do some duct work with it. Uh, but this is significantly quieter. And significantly more powerful than the internal fan in the Glowforge. Exactly. The inline fan leads perfectly into our next tip, which is, you, you absolutely must have adequate ventilation. Yeah. This yeah. is a laser that is burning through materials. And what, anytime you burn anything, you're going to have uh, smoke. You're gonna, you're gonna have, have off-gassing. Yeah, you're gonna have off-gassing. It's just a natural part of the process. Um, we recently just made ourselves some leather Salt Lake City business cards, which we're pretty proud of. Yeah. Who has leather laser business cards? We do. Burning leather doesn't smell great. Burning hair, burning flesh. That's, that's, the, that's the smell. Also, if you're cutting something like plexiglass, I mean. Acrylic has got some real nasty stuff in it when it burns. Yeah. You don't want that in your house. You don't want that in your lungs. Um, it's, it's, just a, it's just not a good thing to have. Not a good plan. So be aware of the ventilation. Mm -hmm. The next tip, tip number four, is placement. Mm -hmm. First of all, going off tip number three, place it near a window or near ventilation. Uh, also, get a sturdy table. Yeah. We have ours on a pretty hefty table uh, that we got from uh, Home Depot, uh, but just something that's sturdy and the right height for you to work at. Mm -hmm. The third thing is make sure you have Wi-Fi access, at least if it's a Glowforge. The fact is, uh, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have a Glowforge because it, all the software to run it is run off the cloud. Tip number five is that laser tubes, like any other electronic component, have a limited shelf life. Um, over the course of their lifespan, the power will fade. Uh, and, and as it turns out with these types of lasers, so that if you don't use it, those gases are gonna separate and that laser tube is going to slowly degrade in terms of its potency. Uh, its, its power output will deteriorate over time. So it's better to continually use your Glowforge. Think about a light bulb or a fluorescent tube, eventually it just wears out. So if you're looking at a laser, you need to consider the price to replace your laser tube and consider that almost a consumable mm -hmm. as part of your laser. Mm -hmm. Tip number six is you get what you pay for. So you'll see online something referred to as Chinese lasers. They're not all from China. That's come to it's, mean- It's not really like fair or it's accurate. It's not, yeah, exactly. Because you just need to be aware of what you're getting. If you're importing your laser, you're gonna potentially have to go through a customs broker, some sort of facilitator. You're gonna have to pay tariffs. Mm -hmm. Shipping alone on your laser 
could be over $1,000. These things are heavy. I'll say Glowforge, uh, a little bit on the expensive end. Ours was about $5,000. Um, but I'll tell you what, if something goes wrong, and we've had a couple of problems, we reach out to the Glowforge and they take care of it. They've been great to work with. Tip number seven is that the Glowforge, it's not quite as plug and play as, as those videos make it seem. Uh, so though it is one of the easier uh, laser systems to use, you're still gonna have to invest some time and material in learning how to most efficiently use this tool. Tip number eight. Glowforge software, it's in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So a couple of advantages. Number one, it's always updated. If the company says, hey, this is a change we wanna make and they made quite a few and they continue to, you get it instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, next, it's always accessible through the web. So you can use any browser, any computer. You can use uh, PC, Mac, uh, phone, Android. Tablet. Tablet, doesn't matter. You can use it as long as you have internet access and you can get to the website. The disadvantage is no internet access, no Glowforge. Mm -hmm. On to tip nine. So safety is a priority. You're dealing with a 45 <laughs> watt laser. Um, that I'll be honest, if it cuts through wood, it'll cut through lots of other things. You don't wanna look at the Glowforge while it is actually cutting materials. Uh, the CO2 laser in the Glowforge produces light that is not in the visible spectrum. However, it creates so much power that it still can damage your retinas if you're looking at it and you're not wearing uh, adequate eye protection. It also lets off some uh, infrared light, which uh, is nasty to your eyes. Uh, Glowforge created their cover, so the, the glass that you look through is actually infrared blocking. However, also recommend that you go out online and get some of these. These look like safety glasses, but these are actually special. These are particular ones are Honeywell glasses, and again, I'll, I'll link to these. Uh, but these also block the harmful rays that come off of the laser. Just be careful. It's important to know your materials. Um, there are a ton of materials that you can use. I think that's one of the major appeals of the, of the Glowforge is that you can work with so many different materials in it. However, there are materials that are flat out dangerous to, uh, to use. For example, I was walking through a, an outdoor market uh, in my sister's town and I saw these really cool records, these old vinyl records with uh, an old Beatles record with their silhouettes cut into it. And I thought, you know what? I need to go home and do that. And I went to the thrift store, I got a record, I was all ready to cut it and I thought, I need to check. Went online, I said, hey, what settings should you use to cut through a vinyl record? And what I got was- None of them. None, <laughs> don't do it. Vinyl records are made out of PVC, which stands for? Polyvinyl chloride. And when you hit uh, a vinyl record with a 45 watt laser, it releases chlorine gas. And it's, it's not just annoying, it's deadly. Mm -hmm. So be very careful the materials you're using. Do a little bit of research, do a little bit of homework, and make sure that you're not walking into some totally non-intuitive, unforeseen safety hazard. There are some great uh, resources out there. Uh, Glowforge's own website, their, their community forum, will tell you what settings should be and also what you can and can't cut. Um, I'll link to a couple of, of sources below that tell you exactly uh, what your settings should be and also if you should just not cut something at all like uranium arsenic alloy, for example. Is, was that something you wanted to cut? The last thing I'd say with safety is don't leave it alone. <laughs> There's this thought that, hey, I'm gonna leave this laser, I can hit print and leave it, and I'm gonna go make some Jiffy Pop popcorn, and I'm gonna come back and I have this thing that's all made for you. I know it's tempting, but babysit your laser. Uh, I'm telling you from experience, I left the laser, I was cutting some, some acrylic, mm -hmm. uh, which is safe, just vent the fumes, and uh, the settings were a little high, and there may or may not have been a fire and melted acrylic all over the inside of the Glowforge. But, but we were lucky. Babysit your Glowforge. I guess the last tip, tip number 10, experiment and have fun. This is a laser, you're making, have fun with it. Um, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Uh, there are all sorts of materials that you can use. Uh, Glowforge 
um, has these materials. This is actually something I just cut today. Uh, and they have something called proof grade materials. And the proof grade materials are materials that they sell that have a little QR code on them. And the Glowforge has a camera that sees the QR code and it presets the laser for exactly uh, the settings that it has to have to cut that material. Now, proof grade materials, really easy to use, also really expensive. Um, they're great, especially if you're starting out, but don't limit yourself to proof grade materials. Uh, we went to the leather shop. Mm -hmm. We got a big piece of, of tan leather. Um, we've been to Home Depot to get wood. Uh, cardboard from Amazon is a great source to do some rapid prototyping. Rocks that we've found. Rocks, we did some obsidian. Mm -hmm. Get creative. Uh, one thing that you'll find is on these links that I'm, I'm listing below, they'll give you actually some ideas on where to reach out and what to, to look for in terms of materials. So those are the 10 things we wish we knew before we got the Glowforge. Now, we're not trying to do this as a word of warning. Um, we love our Glowforge. It's one of the most powerful tools that we have. Mm -hmm. A couple of resources that I'll link to below. There is a Glowforge user group on Facebook. Also, there's a laser cutter and Glowforge uh, group subreddit um, that you can go to and they'll answer your questions. Actually a pretty nice crew on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to, to them to say, hey, what are some things you wish you knew? Some of these tips actually came from them. So thank you to the Glowforge and Laser Cutter subreddits uh, for your support in this video. So our question this week is, if you don't have a Glowforge or similar laser cutter, what have we missed? What do you want to know? Reach out to us and we'll try to answer. And then our, our comment section is actually pretty good. They'll, they'll answer your questions as well. And if you do have a laser, What's been your favorite project to do on the Glowforge? So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us at Salt Lake City and go make something.